Hello and welcome to another GMP video, I'm your host Jornario and today it is another Trove Tips and Tricks. This time I'm going to give you 5 tips to all players who are starting Trove, so if you're an in-game player or even a mid-tier player you will not find this very useful, but if you want I'll try to give tips to those players who are on the end game, but it's going to be a little bit more difficult than a beginner player so keep that in mind. Also I'm a console player, so as of the time making this, we console players do not have the U10 update. So with that being said, let's start with the bonus tip. First of all, if you're just starting the game, pick whichever class you want. All classes at the end game can do well at any portal slash difficulty. So pick whichever class you want. But if you want my recommendation on the first 5 starter classes that you can choose as soon as you log in for the first time. Here are the classes that I think are from the best to worst. So let's get started with number 1, which is going to be the Candy Barbarian. The Candy Barbarian does have a 30% base physical damage by default and all his abilities are very good and very useful, even at the end game, and probably is the best option to start. Number 2 will be the Knight. Since it does have the best basic attack of, out of all starter classes, and all of the damaging abilities are pretty much the highest damage that you will do, and not to mention the subclass is very, very useful. Number 3 is going to be the Boomeranger. The reason I say Boomer is 30 is because it's pretty much a weaker version of the Candy Barbarian. It does have a 15% bonus physical damage by default but all abilities are rather meh and do kind of eh damage but it's not the best and it falls a little bit at the end game. Number 4 is going to be the Gunslinger. I know that a lot of people are going to think that I'm crazy for putting the Gunslinger as low as I'm doing right here but hear me out. The Gunslinger is an average class at best if you're starting the game. All of the abilities do pretty average damage and they're pretty average in utility. I know that the class gets extremely strong when you get the Glacian, but you need 5000 powering and a Glacian key. And not to mention the Glacian is an ultimate ability, so you won't use it the entire time. Unless you have a lot of cooldown reduction. Anyways, moving on with the last one, which is going to be the Tomb Racer. The Tomb Racer is the weakest class in the game in terms of damage output but it's very tanky and you can use this class if you feel if you want a more tanky class but the damage is just no anyways that was my bonus tip uh, regarding the class that you pick as a starting player but remember those were my options from the starter class but you can pick whichever class you want any class can do well at the end game just to let you know now let's continue with the real number one number one pick every item that you see so I've seen a lot of starting players that not picking a certain item just because it's a trash gear. Even though it might be a trash gear, it still might be a piece of gear that you haven't found yet. Getting styles that you haven't found, you can look collect them for one mastery point and it, if, if it is a full helmet like a piñata head or costume hat styles, those will grant 10 mastery points. So pick up those items and you will get a lot of mastery points and mastery is very important in this game. Speaking of mastery, let's move on to number 2. Number 2 is going to be get to troll mastery rank 20, at the very least. If you don't know how to check your mastery, go to character sheet by pressing C on the keyboard or holding down on the d-pad on console to access the character sheet. Then on PC you have to click this icon right here. And for console players you have to press either left bumper or right bumper or R1 or L1 twice to get the mastery tab. Here you can see the rewards that you can get from level and mastery. If you check on the mastery rank 20 tab you can see at mastery 20 you are able to trade with other players which is very important if you want to make flux since flux is the main currency in the game and with being able to get flux from the marketplace you will help you out a lot in the long run now moving on with the third tip which will help you get to rank mastery 20 fast number three level up all your trial characters so if you didn't know, once you unlock a class you can still use the other classes but those other classes are limited to level 4. Once you reach to level 4 or higher with a trial character you will no longer get experience for that class. But every time you level up a trial character you will get 50 mastery points. Which before you get all classes to level 4 you will be able to get to mastery 20 no problem. If that's not the case then at least you should be very close. Also before you ask why did I say higher than level 4. It is possible to get a trial class higher than level 4 if you play Bomber Royale on a level 3 class. Depending on how you do on a Bomber Royale match, you will get enough experience to level up at least more than 2 times, 
which will make a trial character go from level 3 to even as high as level 9 or even 10. As far as my testing, I got a class on an experience day from level 1 to level 8, almost level 9 in just one match. But I did win the game and I got 4 kills in that game and also I play on an experience day just to let you know. So it is possible to get higher than level 4. Anyways, moving on to number 4. Number 4 is going to be Marketplace. Marketplace is your friend. Once you get to Mastery Rank 20 you will be able to access the Marketplace. With the Marketplace you will be able to sell your materials to other players. And some materials in these games are very important to all players, like for example, Glacier Shard, Shapestone, Formicide, Robotic Salvage, Cinnabar, and many many more. Those items will sell for quite a bit of flux, and if you want to check what are the prices of that item in particular, make sure that the box that says sort by unit price is checked since that'll tell you which is the lowest price by unit price. Knowing how to make flux is how you get more powerful really quickly due to be able to buy higher tiers of gear like Stellar. Stellar is still useful for PC players, by the way. I know you can get crystal gear, but you need 5000 power to start getting crystal gear, so Stellar will help you out in getting to 5000 power rank. Also, the other thing that you can do with the vlog is being able to buy yourself some dragons, which will help you out in the long run. And the last tip, tip number 5, do the dragon challenges every time you see them. Dragon challenges are the challenges that appear every hour for 20 minutes. Completing those challenges will grant you a lot of dragon coins. So do them because you will need literally several thousands of dragon coins to get all the dragons. And not to mention Luxion when he appears as well. To start getting dragon challenges you have to be I believe power rank 250 which is uber 1. And you also need throw mastery rank 10. And the type of challenges that you can do are collection, raising, and dungeon completion challenges. And the dungeon completion challenges can be done in any portal, but you will get bonuses for doing it in Uber 5 or higher. And also using the correct class to complete the dungeons will give you more bonuses. And yeah, anyways, that's all the 5 tips I wanted to give to all beginner players in Trove. I know that there's a lot of things that I'm missing, like the store, what type of item you should get from the store, shadow towers, gem, and many many more. If you want me to make another video like this, let me know and I'll try my best to get 5 more tips. Anyways, leave a like if you want to help the channel grow and subscribe if you want to see more content like this and that is all for today. Once again, thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time. Take care and keep on hunting and good luck on Trove. See ya!